DigiKey Electronics presents City Digital, a three-part series brought to you by SupplyFrame, Microchip Technology, and TE Connectivity. In our first episode, we look at how enhanced awareness benefits both public safety and transportation in the cities of the future. The smart city movement is great. What we really need is to move significantly faster. To not just to connect people, but also help us to exchange data in a more accurate way. When you hear the term smart cities, it evokes a more dynamic sense of, of shared resources. From smartphones to streetlights to traffic management, first responders and commuters, new forms of connectivity and data management are poised to transform everyday life for the citizens of City Digital. From the streets of Los Angeles to the suburbs of Detroit and across the globe, Roadbotics is mapping and analyzing the roads we travel every day gathering immense amounts of data to help communities make informed decisions about their roads and infrastructure. Infrastructure is everywhere. It's in the rural towns that you know bring you the food from the field out to the city. So like infrastructure needs to be managed across the entire network. You can't just have incredible cities and then everything else be dilapidated because you won't get food, you can't grow, you don't have power generation. Benjamin Schmidt, CEO of Roadbotics, explains the persistent challenges that road maintenance and repair present for decision makers in charge of large budgets and critical infrastructure. So Roadbotics were there to help sort of maintain roads and infrastructure, taking very advanced technology, deep learning, machine learning, machine vision, and deploying it into a space or a vertical that might not see those kinds of advanced technologies, which is roads, road maintenance, um, and then kind of in the larger picture, infrastructure, and really how do we manage infrastructure in this country, but also around the world. I think we all want it to advance much more rapidly so that we can get the benefits of these kinds of technologies. And ultimately, it will be better for all of us. Um, that's, that is their purpose. Rickard Barafelt, a field applications engineer from TE Connectivity, shares with us the company's plans for exciting new solutions at the foundation of citywide communication and public safety. I think it was last year, the first time that actually IoT devices exceeded the number of mobile phone devices, for example. But really what we've been waiting for, I would say, is the enablement of 5G, for example, to really be able then to connect huge amount of nodes, all the smart meters, the grid meters, gas meters as well as the street lightning or charging ports and, and the cars and etc. 5G is, is really enabling a mass connection by multiple nodes within a, a more metro area and uh, also should then be able to reduce the latency so that you could have better quicker calculations for example on traffic jam to direct routes but also for emergency response system to get quicker to the uh, accident for example. So. Uh, one additional trend that we talk about is the electrification of, of the transportation market. And this is continuously growing. That means everything from personal transportation, of course, with electrical cars, but also with these kick bikes or one wheelers or skateboarders becoming electrified. I think there's an extreme exponential growth of uh, up to 50 billion IoT nodes uh, within the next couple of years here to be installed and connected to the internet. So having that massive uh, input, but also throughput, all these devices is what 5G will enable. So it's really the, the timing is now to uh, kick off a lot of these smart city devices. Future smart cities will leverage autonomous vehicles for more than just transportation. With the autonomous last mile delivery market expected to reach 84 billion by 2030, companies like Rollo Motion are poised to provide a valuable service for rapid delivery in dense city landscapes. We really started with uh, two premises. Uh, one, that micromobility was an exciting uh, domain where people were really moving around cities in new ways, and we wanted to participate that. But we wanted to improve it as well. We wanted to make kind of the mess in the parking better. We wanted to make the ride better, more functional, uh, safer. Um, and we felt that the best way to do that was to design a custom vehicle and, excitingly, make the vehicle autonomous. When you hear the term smart cities, it, it evokes a more dynamic uh, sense of, of shared resources. So, you know, literally with micromobility, you're talking about sharing the same cars. Certainly, we think the autonomous vehicle development that we're doing is, is an important part of that and using the lanes of the road, you know, in a reduced way and in a, in a more efficient way. So smart to me really means a, a more dynamic uh, and maybe smaller bite size of the, the allocation of, of resources that the, the city's using. Cities are understanding how to shape, you know, micromobility 
as a try to keep the positive elements of that. Let's try to keep it a clean offering. Let's try to make it safe. Um, and then for us in delivery space, it's it's much easier to to sort of have an immediate positive impact where we have business partners where we're really helping other businesses you know survive and thrive in, in challenging times. Juan Cibello, European sales manager at Microchip Technology, explains the key role technology plays in the day-to-day function of modern cities. Smart cities are nothing new, and you know the traffic light system is smart. Right? There's so many things that are smart. The current uh, situation has accelerated both the technology so we can do more things at the edge, we can compute things at the edge, we can, we can move more data through 5G, so the technology is supporting uh, what's happening. All of this impacts smart city, right? You, your home is in a city, your uh, business is in a city. All of these things are interconnected, so that's that's where it's all coming. Smart cities to me means something that is eco-friendly, which is green, which is pedestrian, which are designed for people. Smart cities are many things these days. Tony Ng, Vice President of Business Development for the APAC region at DigiKey, shares the company's vision for bringing smart city technologies to every corner of the world, ultimately improving the lives of people everywhere. Uh, DigiKey itself, we are not the technology owner when it comes to uh, components, when it comes to hardware, as an example. In fact, uh, if you look at nowadays, we're carrying, I think, uh, more than 1,500 suppliers. So technology is actually owned by our suppliers. And I think the goal of DigiKey is how we can consolidate all this information. How can we actually help other cities to actually reach that uh, same level faster? Because say, traditionally we have the technology already. How can we enable our website? How can we build all this information into our uh, product information? How can we inform the world? Hey, you know what? Certain area in the world is already doing this. How can we adapt the same technology and you know, apply it for um, the goodness of our humanity? As technology continues to proliferate throughout every aspect of modern city living, the focus on public safety and enhanced awareness creates exciting new opportunities to improve the livelihood for the citizens of City Digital. In our next episode, we look at the role of energy management for cities and towns stepping into a smarter future. From floating solar panels to innovations in battery technology, join us as we meet the individuals and organizations developing solutions to power the cities of tomorrow.